Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the frog scrubby, perfect for your bathroom tub or your kitchen sink. Make all of your cleaning duties fun with this really super cute scrubby. This is a very fun project. It's a great little knitting project and I can't wait to show you how to make this. Now, the frog scrubby pattern is free over on redheart.com. There's a link to it right down there in the video notes. So if you click down there, you can see the link for the free pattern. While you're down there, why don't you go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say so that people know you enjoyed today's video. Once you have your pattern, go ahead and gather your materials and I will show you how to make this really fun pattern. Go ahead, go do it. The frog scrubby pattern begins with a simple rectangle. So all we're going to do is cast on a total of 35 stitches with the color you're choosing to use for your frog scrubby. I'm gonna use blue today. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my yarn and I am going to use a knitted cast on for this particular pattern. So I'm putting a slip knot onto my needles. Now I'm choosing to use circular needles today just because I find them easy to use, but that does not mean you have to use circular needles. You can absolutely use straight needles. Now, once I get my stitch onto my needle, all I need to do is take my, my right hand needle, put it into the stitch, Grab the actual yarn, make sure you don't grab the tail. Yarn over your right hand needle, pop out of that stitch, extend, and you're gonna take your left hand needle, swivel and scoop that stitch onto your left hand needle. Let's do that again. In, around, out, extend, and now I'm going to swivel. Notice I'm swiveling this way and putting that stitch onto my left hand needle again. It's very important that you swivel in this manner, you guys. So there, extend, swivel, place it on, and then when I take it, I can pull that a little bit, snug just to tighten up that loop a little bit. I wanna make sure I'm not tightening it up too much. I actually hesitate to say tighten up the loop at all, but I know that some of you are gonna to want to tighten it a little bit and not have it like super loose. I'm gonna go ahead and get my 35 stitches cast on, and then we're gonna jump into the pattern stitch for the body of the frog. I have my 35 stitches cast on and it's time to jump into the pattern. The pattern repeat for this portion of the frog requires us to begin with the knit two, purl two, all the way to the last three stitches where we will end with a knit two, purl one. Let me show you how that starts off. I'm going to go right here and when I'm working with scrubby yarn, I wanna make sure I'm working into the actual stitch itself and not accidentally grabbing one of the eyelash portions that comes off of the yarn. So I go into the stitch and I'm gonna begin with my knit two. So there's knit one, knit two, and I'm ready to do my purl two. For a purl two, I bring my yarn to the front of my needles and I go between my needles to do that. So I go between my needles to the front. I pull my right hand needle into the front of the next stitch and I purl it. Do that one more time and I purl it. I'm gonna knit two so I go between my needles back to the back. Let me show you one more time. I'm, I'm up here. I go between my needles, go to the back and I'm going to do a knit two. Knit one, knit two. Again, I'm making sure I'm going through the stitch and not the eyelash. I'm ready for purl, so I go between my needles and I purl two. It's very important you go between your needles when you go between your knit and your purl because you will get an accidental yarn over if you do not do that. What's happening with this pattern is we're beginning with a rib, what seems like just a knit two, purl two rib. But when we get to the last three stitches and we end with our knit two, purl one, and then turn our work and then repeat the pattern again, so we start with our knit two, purl two, we are not going to be stacking our knits on top of our knits and our purls on top of our purls precisely in that manner. We're going to space them out. We're doing something that's called a seeded rib or what I like to call the bird seed. And what's gonna happen is you will have a nice ribbed column of knits and then a seed column and then a purl column, a seed column and a knit column. So what this is going to do is create a really squishy texture to your actual piece. So let me show you exactly what it is I mean by that. 
I'm going to pull in an example of a piece I was working on when I was working on the bird seed cowl. Now this stitch pattern is very similar to the bird seed cowl in that we are doing the seeded rib pattern. Can you see here where you have this column of knits, some seed stitch, a column of pearls, some seed stitch, and a column of knits. This is going to happen in your actual froggy pattern. It won't be this pronounced because we are looking at a really solid round um, yarn right here, nothing that has a lot of eyelash coming off. So yours isn't going to be as noticeable, but it is gonna be nice and squishy. So if I set this down, let me go ahead and grab in the little sample I made. This is the froggy scrubby pattern, okay? This is what it's gonna come out like. You can see I have my column of knits right here. They, are, they look a little bit faint. They're a little bit difficult to see because of the yarn, the texture of the yarn, but they are there. And if I flip it over, I get the same thing. I get my nice column of knits because I do have a column of pearls between here. What's great about this, you guys, is it's really squishy. I mean, this, look at that, it all crumples up. It's really nice and squishy. It, it, it you know, accordions in. It's just, it's a good texture, okay? So as you're making the body of your froggy scrubby, you're not gonna just be able to rely on knitting your knits and purling your pearls when you're doing ribbing because the actual stitch pattern is a little bit different and it's all because of the last three stitches that we do in the row. It sets the stitch pattern repeat off. Some people actually call this like a mistaken rib because it could be like, oh, I just forgot to cast on one extra stitch. Um, but it, it is an actual stitch pattern and that is correct. This is what it's going to turn out like. Let's take a look one more time. As I space this out, this is what it looks like as I'm knitting it. Now, as I go to place my um, eyes and stuff on it, I'm going to turn the work, and this is how the designer placed the eyes on it. So she has the work facing this way, and then she places the eyes, does the mouth and the tongue, and then the little loop. And the designer for this particular project, you guys, is Michelle Wilcox. She's amazing when it comes to making um, little stuffed animals or fun things like this. Now that you know how to cast on and how the stitch pattern works up and what it's supposed to look like, go ahead and do that and then we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you how to make the eyes and the tongue for this little froggy. If you're gonna have a froggy scrubby, it's gotta have a pair of really big kind of froggy eyes, right? They're really easy to make, and at first, I thought I was gonna have to pull out my double pointed needles to get this circle, but that's not the case. We're going to make these on our, our straight needles or your circular needles, whatever it is you happen to be using, and then we're going to seam it up to create the circle. Really easy, let me show you how. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab the center color of your eyeball. So for me, it's going to be this white color. And I'm gonna go ahead and cast on six stitches. So I'm going to do the six stitches just like I did before. And I am just doing my knitted cast on. So I'll do my six stitches as quickly as possible here. Once you have your six stitches, you're gonna jump into the pattern, which requires you do a knit front and back in each stitch all the way to the end. For a knit front and back, you go into the stitch, just like normal, and knit it. And when you come out of the stitch, don't let that jump off yet. You're gonna swivel your right hand needle around and go into the back leg of that same stitch and knit through the back leg also and jump off. So there's one. So where we had one stitch, we now have two. So you go into the stitch, Yarn over, come out the stitch, swivel around, go into the back leg of the stitch, yarn over, come out and off. In, around, out, swivel, in, around, out, and off. I'm gonna do this all the way to the end. Once you do all the knit front and backs, you will have 12 stitches. After you've completed that row, you will knit the next row without any increases. At the end of that row, you will turn your work and you will work a knit one, knit front and back. And you will repeat that all the way to the end of the row. 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm doing my knit one and then my knit front and back. And I will repeat that. So I will knit one and then knit front and back. This is going to increase a total of six stitches. By the end of this row, I will have a total of 18 stitches. When you're finished with row three, you will begin row four with your new color. This new color is color A, which is your main color of your dishcloth. All you will do is grab your main color and then begin knitting with that color. This entire row is just a knit row. So simply knit across the row with your brand new color. After you finish row four, row five is simply a repeat of knit two, knit front and back, knit two, knit front and back. So we will begin with our knit two. So I'll knit one stitch, knit two stitch, and then knit front and back. Knit one, knit two, knit front, and back. At the end of this row, it's time to bind off all of your stitches. To bind off, you simply will knit two stitches and have the back stitch jump the front stitch. So I knit two stitches. I'm going to take my left hand needle to grab the back stitch of the right hand needle and have it jump up and over the front stitch and off. Then I'll knit one stitch, have the back jump over the front and off. Knit one stitch, back, jumps up and over the front and off. Knit one, over and off. At the end of the bind off row, you wanna make sure you leave a nice long tail. So that way you can use it to seam the eyeball onto the actual body of the frog. So I am done right here. I'm just pulling my tail through and it's finished. It doesn't much look like an eyeball yet, right? So what we're going to do here is we will fold and form this little eyeball to be in the round and we will use the tails from our other yarn. So I can trim this one. I forgot to cut the tail of, of the main color, the white color. And I just seam these together and all it does is it creates a really cute eyeball. Now to seam them, it's really easy. All I'm going to do is grab one of the tails, thread it into my steel tapestry needle, and I am just whipping this closed. I'm going, making sure I'm going in the white both times. Pretty easy, you guys. When I get up here to where it's time to change, I'm just gonna drop the white. I'm gonna grab the shorter of the green. So this is the tail from the start of the row when I started my green. I wanna make sure it's not super short. I always tend to leave four to six inches, so I have no worries there. And I'm just going to seam this closed with this portion. Once it's all closed up, look at that cute little eyeball. So cute. All I do now is I can take my tails and I can weave them to the inside or because this eyeball is going to be flush on the dishcloth, I can just take these tails, the ones that I've used already. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tie them into a knot tie them into a knot. And when I sew this eyeball into place, I'm just gonna tuck these tails right into there. You know what I mean? I could trim them up, just tie a knot and trim them up. Ooh, goes spreading everywhere. So now what I do is I will grab the longer portion of my tail, 
bring my body into to play. And remember, even though the body was made this way, the way Michelle Wilcox had us um, attach pieces on is it's up and down like this. So I will place my eyeball, let's see here. Let's place my eyeball where I want it to be. So, hmm, let's place it there. Now I'm making the eyeball come up over top of the top, you know, like frogs eyes do. So I'm just going to sew this into place along the bottom here. So I'm just going to pop that to the other side, make sure this is separated out a little bit. And when I come back up, I'm going to just whip this into place. And as you come through, you might accidentally snag through one of the eyelashes, making it a little bit difficult to pull. So um, be careful, be cautious of that. If you do do it, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't end, you know, ruin your project by any means. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to get the tapestry needle through. And I will take this time to say, if you're using a um, plastic tapestry needle to try and do this, it might be a little bit more difficult. So do yourself a favor and get yourself a steel tapestry needle to weave in your ends and to sew it into place. It makes it easier. Oh, look how cute is that? All right, so I'm gonna pop this to the other side and then I can, tuck my tail in just like so. I'm weaving it through all the little extra bits here. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This yarn is completely forgiving. And then what I like to do when I'm working with this particular yarn is I will make a knot. So I've pulled it through, made a knot, I'm giving it a nice pull, and now I can trim it right up to the edge here. And it's not gonna come undone. So there's my first eyeball. I could do my second one here and I'm just gonna place it right there next to the first one. Once you get the eyeballs, it's time to go ahead and make the tongue. Ugh. The tongue is a super simple thing to make. As you look down here, all I've done is I've cast on the three stitches and I've knit my three rows and it's time for me to do a knit three together. Oh, slide that back in there. And to do a knit three together, it is really super easy. I can either come over here and go into this last stitch of the three and try and come all the way across and knit all three of those stitches together. I find that a little bit hard to do with this yarn. So what I've done, because we essentially wanna get down to where we just have one stitch, I went ahead and I, I went ahead and I slipped the first stitch, knit two together on the next stitch, and then I pass the first stitch over. And so that's what gave me my finished knit three together. So when I do that, I like to finish off with just one more kind of chain, cut my yarn, and I'm gonna leave a nice long tail, again, because I wanna sew it into place when I make the mouth on my froggy. But there is my little tiny tongue. It looks like a little nothing right now, but it'll be a cute little tongue coming out of the mouth. Once you finish the tongue, the last thing to do is the embroidery of the mouth and the eyes on your dishcloth. Now, I'm a knit and crochet designer. I don't do a lot of embroidery, but I like to mess around with it a little bit when it's time to do things like this, put a little detail into my work. I'm saying that so that all of you out there who are like, Marley, I don't know how to embroider, I can't do this. If I can do it, you can do this, I, trust me. We're gonna start off with what's called a satin stitch. Really, they're just long loops that go like this, and they're going to go around um, the, the yarn itself, and it's gonna create a pupil of the eye for the eyeball. Then we're gonna do a long straight stitch, which is just, as it sounds, it's a long straight stitch to create the nice smiley face. Once we have the smile, that's where we know we can put the tongue. It's really easy. Let me show you how to do the satin stitch first. I've gone ahead and I've pre-threaded my With Love yarn onto my steel tapestry needle. Yes, I'm using just a small bit of black With Love yarn, and I've already done one pupil, so I'm going to come across and try and make it as even as possible. Do you have to make it even? No, you could have one like up in the air, or one down low, it doesn't matter. I'm sticking my needle through the other side, like from going from back to the front, and I'm going to pull it through, and I'm gonna leave a nice little tail there so that I have something to weave in. 
Now it's simple as this, guys. I'm gonna jump up a little ways, stick my needle in, and pull out. Now the satin stitch is this, what it, this is how it goes. I'm gonna take my needle in and I'm gonna bring it back out this direction, right next to where the other portion of this bit came out, pull up, and then come up right next to the other portion and come back. They are just straight lines of thread that lay right next to each other. And for the previous one, I did four lines. So I'll do that again this time and see how it turns out. There's no you know, really rhyme or reason. You just kind of go along with it. Use your creativity. Maybe you make long, straight slats for, for pupils. Doesn't really matter. In and out, come back. Let's see here, that looks pretty good. Not too bad. All I do now is I flip it to the other side and I need to weave in my tails. Now for me, for this particular little dishcloth, I just tied a knot with my ends, okay? I'm tying an actual knot because it's just a dishcloth or a, a tub meat and I'm pulling it super tight. And because I'm using acrylic yarn, I can pull it really nice and tight and it doesn't wanna break, right? And I'm gonna call that good. Now, typically I would weave in my ends. Um, if this was a different type of project, I would weave them in and I would never tie a knot. But for this little dishcloth, I think it's okay to tie that knot. It's really not that big of a deal because this is going to be used and it's not gonna come undone. It's gonna be nice and neat. And so now I have some little eyeballs. So let's make a smile, yay! For the mouth, for the smile, we're going to do a straight stitch. For the straight stitch, I'm going to pick a spot that I want to begin the stitch. So I'm gonna begin right there. And I'm gonna pull up, and I'm going to make sure I leave a tail just like before. Now, I'm going to come over a bit of a ways, and when I go back in, I'm going to pull through. All right. Now, unlike a back stitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to jump over just a little bit. I'm gonna come back up, maybe at this point right there. And when I come back up, I'm not going to go back into that space. I'm going to jump over and come back down. So I am leaving a little bit of space between each loop, or not loop, each, um, I don't know what it's called, straight stitch. <laughs> so what is pretty easy, I can't just kind of come, come in and come back up, you know, and decide where I want each stitch to be. So now I'm back up, let's see here. I don't know. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure that the stitches aren't totally far apart. So I'm gonna pull out that last one because I think it's too far. So let's pull out that last one. I actually don't think I need this much yarn, but I didn't wanna chance it and have too little. Thread that back on, and here we go again. So I'm up, let's go down and up like that. That's a little bit better. I wanna keep the spaces between my stitches as even as possible. So if I started there, I'm gonna end there. So let's go straight across and start to make our way back up. Why not? You can play with this. You just saw how easy it is to pull it out if you want to. Let's see, let's go like that. And we're gonna come down here. All right, so that's a straight stitch. That's how it works. It's just a little goofy little stitch. And then here at the, at the top portion, I can go ahead and create like a little smile line, you know? Just come across, let's see here. See how this looks. I don't know if that's like too long. No, that looks good. I'll flip it over, and right here I can weave in my ends. This is where I'm not gonna tie a knot. I'm just splitting some of the yarn in the actual green, and I am just weaving in my ends. I'm gonna come through the black there. Let's see what that does. 
that makes a difference. Weave in my end. I'm going to snip this so that it's easier to work with. Just want to make sure it's in there and not going to come undone on me. You know what I mean? Because that would stink. Because then I'd have to rib it, rib it, rib it. <laughs> These are the jokes, people. <laughs> All right, so I've threaded through a couple times. I'm going to snip that. And then with my tail that I started with over here, I'm going to go ahead and use what I have here to make another smile mark. So maybe I come right there and pop it back through. Oh, right there. Let's see. There's a smile mark. And then I'm going to weave in my ends. So I'm, again, weaving it through just some of the green. I'll come through some of the black here in just a second. I'm actually going like through the actual black yarn itself just to weave it in, make it nice and secure. Thread this back on, accidentally pulled my needle out. Yeah, come back up a little ways. Here we are. Snip that close. Let's see what we have here. Oh, look at that. We have a cute little froggy so far with a little tiny mouth. All it needs is a tongue because the froggies have the tongues, right? Okay, so we can use our nice long tail and just secure our tongue right into place. So I made my tongue nice and red because I wanted a big bright red tongue here and I am going to apply it right to the side of the mouth and I'm just going to pop it through and I'm going to use this tail to sew the tongue into place. So I'm coming in and out of the red tongue and the green body right next to my straight stitch embroidery and you can decide if you want to secure the entire tongue all the way down or if you want it to be able to flip up and, you know, kind of be like little, little, little. <laughs> totally up to you. I think I like that little, 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 little. so I'm going to leave that up. So I will just tuck that end in. So let's see here, here, back here, I'm going to secure this into place. Oh, I don't know if that shines. Yep, that shines through on the other side. I don't want to do that. So I'll put it into place on this side. Make sure it doesn't pop through on the other side at all. Perfect. Oh, this is so adorable. Nice and tight in there. Come over here to this side and I can take my tail and I'm just going to thread it on or yeah, thread it onto my needle and I'm going to weave my tail into the actual tongue. I'm not going to sew it onto the body because I want it to be loose. I want it to flap its tongue. Yeah? How adorable is this? I just think these things are so cute. So I'm going to bring it back to the other side. There's my tongue. If I wanted to, I could do eyelashes. Super duper cute. The last thing left, if you want to have a hanging portion to your frog, you can absolutely add that. It's as simple as casting on 16 stitches and then binding them off immediately and then sewing that piece in between the eyes on the actual frog. Really easy to do that. Um, you could also, if you're handy with a crochet hook, use a crochet hook and just chain some stitches and create a nice little loop that way. So because you all know how to cast on and bind off. I'm not going to show you how to do the loop that way, but why don't I show you how to do it with a crochet hook? All I'm doing here is I'm grabbing a crochet hook and I'm going to stick my hook right between the eyeballs there and I'm going to begin with a slip knot, so a slip stitch. So I pull the yarn through, yarn over, and pull that through. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to chain, oh, I don't know, I could do the 16 just like the pattern calls for for your um, knit stitches, but how about I do enough that I feel like it is big enough to create a loop. 
So right there is a nice big loop. I could do a couple more. Now I have a choice. I can either go back and single crochet into all of these chains or I can leave it as is and call it good. That's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to go ahead and cut my yarn, leaving a nice long tail, because that's what I'm gonna use to sew it into place. I finished my chain, thread my chain right onto my needle here, come back down here where I started, and look at this, pop it through, I have my nice little loop. All I need to do is weave in my tails and I have a completed froggy scrubby. And this is so easy because this yarn is so secure. You're gonna find out if you try and break this yarn with your hands, it's gonna hurt. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a nice knot with my tails right there, snip it real nice and close and check it out. I have a froggy little scrubby, so cute. And now you know how to use those handy dandy crochet hooks to make a simple little loop if you don't wanna do the cast on and then bind off immediately. Okay, now you know how to make the froggy scrubby. These are super fun to make and they make spectacular gifts. Make one in multiple colors and you could have a frog of every color of the rainbow. Hope you enjoyed this video and you will hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever there's a new video release. And make sure to smash that like button as my kids say. I I will talk to you guys again soon. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. It's so cute.